so glad to be with you this morning. If you are online, welcome. It is good to have you here with us as well. Uh, please know that you are welcomed, loved, and that God is well pleased with you. Uh, I don't know, can you see the glow in me this morning? I don't know if you can, but I told you so, the Los Angeles Rams were going to win the Super Bowl, and they did. So, you can see how it is so exciting, right? Um, it's a big deal. You didn't know this, but I think maybe like 20, 30 years we didn't have NFL in, in, in Los Angeles, and then uh, we get to celebrate a Super Bowl. So, so good. The halftime show took me back to 1992. Uh, all the artists, such a good show, such a good time. Well, with all of that joy, we prepare our hearts, our minds, our souls to engage the holy, sacred, and ancient words of God. We get to glean, think about this, from thousands and thousands of years of wisdom. Words that offer clarity, but also ambiguity, who are absolute and yet ever-evolving. These are words that are challenging and yet comforting. Words of love, of grace, of nonviolence. Words that alter our relationship with neighbor, with planet, and with the divine. This is why we study. This is why we examine the Holy Scriptures week after week. Our title today's sermon is Spiritual Battle Between Love and Faith. Today's wisdom comes from Luke's Gospel. And it's perhaps, I'll just start off with this, perhaps the most unique and the most challenging teaching of Jesus. There is no commandment of Jesus which has caused so much discussion and debate as the commandment to love your enemies. Keep in mind that Jesus had just finished preaching a sermon on the Beatitudes, which for the ancient world was more than merely attitudes about being a follower of Jesus, but quite literally, Jesus takes the accepted standards of antiquity and turns them upside down. In one sermon, he redefines the entire social system, presents a seismic shift in human perspective, and calls upon those who are ready to listen. Calls upon those who are prepared to accept a greater call, an ethical call, shall we say, to justice and devotion. But I ask you this morning, how can one answer such a call if one does not fully understand it? One must discover what enemy love means, when, and only then can one truly obey this commandment. Let's attempt to find some openings, some hints perhaps, um, uh, about this teaching on this morning. And I'll start with this. The ancient Greeks defined this kind of love as more than an emotion, more than a feeling, more than a sentiment, but also an attitude or a matter of action or will. Which means that this kind of love, it's, it's a dynamic love, it's an energetic love. And the language of the scripture says it this way, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Active, dynamic, right? A matter of action, a matter of will. And see, I realize, like I'm sure you realize, that enemy love commandment is not a normal or human response. It's not a normal, natural response. You know what is normal and natural? The normal and natural human response is quite literally the opposite of enemy love. It is enemy hate. And enemy hate, by the way, naturally converts into enemy vengeance. Now, for the ancient world, vengeance was, cor was the corresponding response to enemies. However, in this passage, Jesus calls 
us and, can, and, and really calls us to an elevated view, an, el- an elevated ethical view in response. Scripture puts it this way, why should we be commended to love those who love you, to do good to those who do good to you, to lend to those from who you expect repayment, even sinners do all that. Instead, it says, act like children of the Most High. Love your enemies. Do good. Expect nothing in return. Be kind. Be passionate. Don't judge. Don't condemn. Forgive. In other words, to act like children of the Most High is to break the cycle of vengeance, the cycle of enemy hate. By the way, if you do this, Scripture says you will have a great reward, a good portion, packed down, firmly shaken, and overflow. However, before we go there, before we acknowledge the packed down, shaken together, overflowing rewards of God, I think we have to wrestle with ways to practice this commandment. How can one truly practice enemy love? Is it even possible? Well, let me start with this. Jesus says, bless those who curse you. You know, the ancient Greek here for bless, it derives from a compound word. The first word, you, which means good. The second word, lagos, which means word. You put those together and it says good word. So to bless someone means to have a good word or to speak well of someone. And right here, in this moment, is where we discover the wisdom. Here is where I invite you to open your mind, your heart, your soul to encounter the Holy Spirit. If you are ready to listen, listen. If we are to love our enemies, the one way is by speaking well of our enemies. It's an active feeling of benevolence towards the other person. It is a dynamic choice that no matter what that person does to us, we will never allow ourselves to desire anything but their highest good. It is a deliberate action to go out of our way to speak kindly of that person. Do you realize just how challenging it is to speak well of enemies? And yet Jesus calls us to a higher standard, a higher calling. Bless those who curse you. Speak well of your enemies. Another way to practice enemy love is to forgive. Now I recognize that forgiveness carries numerous meanings for us. So I, I want to share with you some basic truths about forgiveness. Firstly, forgiveness is not overlooking what the person did. Nor, it is, nor is it to pretend like nothing ever happened. Forgiveness does not always result in reconciliation, nor does the relationship return to how it was before. Forgiveness is not what we often fear, forgive, and forget. Because forgiveness does not mean forgive, forgetting. Sometimes forgiving means creating new boundaries in a relationship. Sometimes forgiveness means loving that person from a distance. You might say to me, though, this morning, Pastor Moses, you don't know what that person did to me, though. What if I told you that forgiveness is setting someone free only to realize that it's you who is being set free? Forgiveness means to release, to let go, to set free. If we are to love our enemies, then we are to release our enemies. Set them free, let them go. Offer them forgiving love, for in doing so we are setting ourselves free. You see, there's so much we can learn from others. There are communities in this world that continue to practice forgiving love. One of those communities, the BIPOC community, black, brown, indigenous, people of color, Asian, Pacific Islander, this community, think about it, the BIPOC community 
continues to step into the American Christian Church Sunday after Sunday. An institution that does not reflect them, that does not authentically embody them. Why would it? After all, it is the religion of the colonizers. An establishment that is historically racist and still today continues to operate knowingly and unknowingly under institutional and systemic racism. For the BIPOC community to walk through the doors uh, with forgiving love for the church, now that opens the door to a possible reconciliation. Every time someone of color comes in through the doors of the American Christian Church, it announces with a megaphone that we will overcome hate with love. Now that embodies enemy love. The LGBTQIA plus community does this as well, despite the continued rejection and othering for most of the evangelicalism, Pentecostalism, Catholicism, even most of Protestantism. Regardless of the homophobia, transphobia, and the discrimination of the image of God on their faces, they keep visiting the church. They keep showing up Sunday after Sunday. They keep overcoming hate with love, seeking reconciliation and practicing forgiving love. Now that embodies love for them. I know this is hard to hear. I wonder, is it, can we truly will ourselves to love this way? Because, you know, the revolution of this commandment is in front of us this morning. The, the elevated ethical view and response is right here for those who are ready to listen, for those who are ready to accept the call, to speak well of your enemy, to release your enemy, to overcome hate with love when we love this way. Seeking nothing but our enemy's highest good. Then... We will in truth be the children of God. Living into the very nature and action of God. You see, Jesus knows this kind of living too well. Arrested, sentenced to death, beaten, ridiculed, humiliated, crucified. And on that cross, and from that cross, Jesus still demonstrated enemy love, prayed for the forgiveness of his persecutors, saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And he died on that same cross to take our failures, our mistakes, our transgressions, our vengeance, our need for hate, all of that and gave us his forgiveness, his successes, his righteousness, his love. And on the third day he rose again to liberate us, to free us. What shall we do with such newfound liberation and freedom? With such a beautiful and poetic and lovely message. It just overwhelms you.
The poem is titled, When They See Us. I'm not going to write poems about people judging people. I'm going to write poems and speak about people loving people. The problem is much bigger than just class and race. It's not a political war, but a spiritual battle between love and hate. If it's going to take a village, then our villages are going to need love. So when they see us, they don't see us as pillars and thugs. So when they see us, they see us and don't judge. So when they see us, they see us with eyes full of love. It's not about liberals and conservatives reaching across the aisle. It's about reaching into our hearts to extend a loving smile. The labels are fables that separate us from our truth. We all need to read the need to see the love in our roots. Love is the revolution and compassion be our bullets. Empathy be the trigger for forgiveness to pull it. Freedom is our target and unconditional love be our goal. When civic engagement starting at the sea of our soul. Grace plays the symphony and just mercy leads the band. For the lady of liberty to love and to set all in this land. Love is the revolution. Word of God and word of life, and we all sit together. Thanks.